It was mental, man. It was it was because yep. I was going through the shit. But I'm glad it happened in that way, and it happened, and, and I and I paid for it in that way because now I real I did learn the lesson. Yeah, it was so traumatic to you. You realize, wow, this is how it's gonna be. If like, yeah, yeah, for that charge, even yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing sex, to, you know, uh, uh, pedophilia or anything like that. It, but they feel the same way about physical abuse, especially if it's an autistic kid. And you're right about that octopus prime. There are better reasons to not hit kids than how inmates will treat you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Because you're hitting a child. You're hurting them. Yeah. And, you know, Zachary doesn't know any better sometimes. So, he didn't know that, though. He had to be taught that in, like, such a fucking horrible manner. I was mental, dude. I know. I know you were, but I'm glad it's in your head now. There, She's smacking Jason in the face. She's like, fuck you. 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 I love you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Floofy face. That's right. What are you doing, floof ball? <laughs> she has restless tail syndrome. I'm glad Jason knows he messed up and yeah. can repent for it. Yeah. I. Totally That's was. why I took him back. Is because of that. But if he ever did that shit again, holy shit. No, I should go away for a long time. No, 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 no. You're not going to get another chance after that. I'm done. Yeah, yeah of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. I ain't putting up with that shit. I hope you don't do it again and prevent yourself from getting to that place where you where you did, did it in. Yeah, exactly. Ugh, the father denied he knew anything about the abuse. What are you talking about, drag? I hope you don't reach out to G-Man if he does it again, because that would be very awkward. What the fuck? Never mind. I don't fucking care. <laughs> you gotta switch it back to the thingy. <laughs> oh my god. God, that fucking night. It was my fault. You know, that I was the reason because if I had done they already think that she's mean to kids. So they're going to uh, think that she's abusing them, right? That's because she like, is. They're too soft to their kids. They're too weak, right? Things like that. So uh, we go to a, a get together. Maybe it was a 4th of July, maybe. And then, uh, you know, my aunt asked about the, um, her hand injury. And that's when I said, uh, I was not there. And then I came in and um, put her hand in the water and got her. Not surprisingly, Tyler's Aunt Maylene didn't buy a story. Not at all. A few months later, at another family gathering that occurred oh, on October Bobby. 10th, Maylene, along with other relatives, were stunned when they observed that Callie appeared to have lost a significant amount of weight since the previous time they they'd encountered her, her in yeah. July. Yeah. According to Maylene, Callie was seen devouring food, even eating off plates that belonged to others. That was when Maylene contacted CPS. In mid-October of 2015, CPS met with Tyler and Avriana in their home. True to form, Avriana asked Tyler to accept blame for Callie's hand injury yet again. CPS comes, I tell him the same thing, you know, uh, I was not there, and she put her hand in the water, and then, uh, I looked up, had a heel of 30 degree burn, and then I did everything I said, and she was good to go, no pain. The fact that Avriana manipulated Tyler into taking responsibility for his daughter's burned hand and Tyler agreeing to lie to his family and CPS 
shows the dynamic of their relationship, and if true, how he potentially favored his wife. His bra's a fucking cuck. Bruh. You're fucking weird, dude. If over the well-being of his own child. In addition to the concerns about potential abuse, Tyler's family also worried that Callie wasn't being fed. Hey, his people have said, his family has said that she wasn't eating enough or something like that. And I, I think that's another reason why they called. But why would they shit up? Um, I guess because she was thin. But thin was an extreme understatement. What was the end result of them checking out you, checking out? Everything was fine. They closed the case. They closed, they closed the case because she clearly wasn't being abused. You guys can't judge her book by its cover, you know, because I'm a chef. That doesn't mean I'm just abusing my daughter because she did something. And that's what I told the CPS people. Okay. They talked to her, looked at her, checked her. Of course, everything was fine. You know, I'm just disciplining her. I'm just little pops, okay? You know, you guys are making it seem like I'm punching her. Giving that girl a little pops a lot. <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to interrupt my stream for a DM. Especially to someone I've never seen before. Actually, the report described the findings to be inconclusive. It also stated that the concern was that Tyler and Avriana were using excessive or inappropriate methods of discipline. The report hit the nail on the head, yet CPS dealings with the Andersons were discontinued. Things were building towards a horrific end in the time that followed. Oh. Dude, I don't want your information. I don't need your information because something tells me that said information is caused for a fight. So, have a nice life. I don't need any information. I don't give a fuck. Oda. Still, Tyler gives more insight into the terrible things that were going on behind the closed doors of that apartment. Of course, he refused to put any blame on his own actions. There was the time that Avriana allegedly flew off the handle for no apparent reason and kicked him and Callie out of the home late one night. According to Tyler, this was a common occurrence. You know, she's screaming outside the, uh, house, you know, um, get the out, don't ever come back, you know, take that, take your dumb ass baby with you. Of course, it must be noted that Tyler was well aware of this type of name calling. A record... Nah. ...of text messages within the lead detective's narrative confirms this. He continues with details of physical abuse Callie would encounter at the hands of Avriana. She would use belts, she would use wind spoons, she would use brushes and comb, you know, she would just, she would have thought, you know, I have to stop her, you know, it's like, and then Avriana would say that she, you know, she pushed her brother, brother, she punched her brother, she had a brother. I told her that you can't use objects because you don't know how hard you're hitting them, you know what I'm saying? hitting that baby that's what it is yeah she's just a wicked freaking witch of the west she's a mommy dearest yeah 
that's what she is. Mommy dear is starving her child, hurting her child. Like, fuck this bitch, man. I don't like her at all. How she talks about such disdain about that beautiful little girl. And that father just fucking is so cucked that he does this. This is like my mom. All the fucking awful shit she did to me. And my fucking dad fucking just stands back and lets it fucking happen. Because that was my fucking life. It's just that little fucking girl. Fuck these parents, man. This is triggering. Yeah. <laughs> this is bringing some, some feelings from me, man. As time went on, the cruel acts Avery You can't Avery always upon save her? Excuse me? That's when you, as a father, should have cut that fucking bitch to the curb. You can't always save her. That's a fucking threat to your child. Yeah. Look what happened to your child. <coughs> she was telling you her intentions the whole time. You deserve to go to jail for that. You were neglectful of your child. It's bullshit. You need to increase in severity. Tyler tells of one particular evening when he arrived home from work and encountered what could only be described as a terribly distressing sight. And yet the question why is still left unanswered for now. I was in the bathroom, right? And she didn't uh, And she saw it. And Cage. Note that Maverick is the alleged family dog that Tyler claimed Avery owned. She put the baby in that fucking cage? No way. Are you for real? What? Hmm. That woman's Sharmuta. She's wild. Bitch. Just evil, yeah. The spirit of Lilith. Spirit of Lilithu, that's what you are, Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Disgusting. It's crazy. How could you do that to a child? Wow. Donna wanted, then left his care solely up to Tyler. He was kept in a kennel in the main bathroom at the Anderson apartment. Apparently, this was the alternative There's to imposing shit on the other floor, physical. Yeah. And food. There's food and shit on the floor and handcuffs. She would handcuff them? No way. No way. What? That's insane. Wow. No way the father didn't know about this. No, he had to. Yeah. This is bullshit, yo. Use on Callie. Since Tyler had allegedly told Avriana not to use her hands or objects as punishment toward Callie. Yeah, you know, I'm the first man to get her out of the cage, you know. Uh, but she don't, she's not crying. She's not crying and she's not. She's not her, she's not Bruce, right? What the hell is she doing in this case? You know, and Ryan said that, you know, she pushed, she pushed her brother. Tyler appears to be hiding his eyes, which could be an indication of Dude! Why didn't you call the police when that fucking shit happened? Yeah. Oh my god, I hate this mother so bad, this stepmom. She is so 
stinking, blinking evil. Fucking handcuffs? Yeah, dude. Like, that's insane. That's messed up shit, dude. Nah, man. This bitch needs to go fucking down, dudes. Yeah. This bitch needs to go fucking down. I hear you. Deception. Or it may be that he doesn't want to see the detective's reaction to what he is divulging. His claims concerning Avriana's behavior suggest she is unstable and impulsive. This may indicate the presence of a personality disorder, as this extreme behavior suggests that Avriana lacks empathy and remorse and has a poor moral conscience. Ultimately, we see that the abusive behavior continues to head in a tragic direction. The detectives return to a troubling issue, which they glossed over previously. Callie's unknown whereabouts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just I mean, I sort of. They didn't say anything, but I'm sure it's like some kind of antisocial, antisocial or narcissistic personality disorder. I don't know if there's a JCS on this. The system failed them too. Yeah, there's that too. So messed up, dudes. She would stay with his mom, you know, and stuff like that. Contrary to Avriana's claim, it's known that Callie never stays with Tyler's family. Things are beginning to become problematic for Avriana. They shift to Tyler and his involvement, <laughs> or lack thereof, in the household, as he has been working two jobs. And when I was over, it was like all working hours usually. 10 to 9, 10 to 8, 10 to 7. Okay. The fact that Tyler is away from the home for so many hours of the day casts doubt on Avriana's claims that he was the primary caretaker of his daughter. Things just aren't adding up. When did you actually last talk to Tyler? Today. Well, then, so it was Monday. Avriana called Tyler around 1 earlier that afternoon. She Look just at that baby. Up. It just so happens that she was sleeping off her most recent round of cocaine. Did you ask him where he was last night? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. This woman is so gross. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I was half asleep TVH, so I was like, I, I really just wanted to go back to sleep. I know how she's casually sitting. That woman don't give two fucking fucks about what happened to that little girl. In fact, she's fucking happy that little girl is gone. Mm. Maybe the little girl just didn't like you because you're just evil. Mm. You decided to choose her and treat her like she was some freaking enemy or something. Evil bitch. know that was definitely not the case. As they seem to have hit a wall, they light a little fire under Avriana. We just got more, we got a phone call, we got some information, more information. Um, you are talking to Tyler, okay? Your, your daughter. Well, she wasn't at somebody else's house, she was at your apartment this entire last week and, and this entire time. Since so you guys have moved here, okay? So, what, what, so yeah, so she's living with you guys, right? It's but she doesn't seem phased. Despite their questions, the detectives already know the child is deceased. What they don't yet know, however, is what caused her death and to what extent Avriana was involved. They also need to determine the disturbing motive behind the death. They quickly touch on another important element of the case they are methodically building. What should I say? Oh, listen. Result. Uh, she knows that that's what was going on. They got the doctor's office together with that for anything? No. Has she at all resigned? No. Um, but she's five years old, though. Yeah. When's the last time? Yeah, I agree with that, Port. It is. She went to any kind of a physical or any kind of doctor. Um, I would have been with him. Of course, Avriana has another excuse as to why everything has deteriorated. She adds an interesting detail to her account of recent events. 
having withdrawal sy symptoms, honey? Probably. <laughs> like, you didn't care about that little girl. You getting high was more important than taking care of that little girl. <clears throat> like, so fuck you. I don't feel any sympathy for this woman. Brianna now, and has his elbows on his knees. This is done to show that he is engaged, and he wants to try to get her to mirror this open demeanor. Often, suspects will assume this position when they confess. Adriana fails to confess, but she does explain more about Cocaine's recent role in their lives. My relationship has been, you know, and that's what we used to do back in the day, you know, and with each other, we used to do that, and I felt connected to him. The one that made me feel connected to my husband. Did you and Tyler do Cocaine quite a bit lately? That we have been. She makes a powerful statement when she reveals the dire condition of their relationship. The drug use, which she alleges has very recently become a regular habit, just adds more fuel to the already raging fire. However, I love that they wear best dad ever. That's called fronting. Hmm. Oh, look at her with her with the blue all up in her hair like she has no kids or anything. <sighs> Trying to look all young. It's all about the freaking vids. It's all about the freaking vids, isn't it? Oh, people like her, I swear to God. Anyway. Your babies are, are there to, and given to you by God. Even if you're a step-parent, they're given you by God to share each other's love. And you just take advantage of God's gift and throw it away like it's garbage. Oh, fuck off. I love my sons, and they love me, and they're not damaged in any way. So fuck off. Gotta make everything so goddamn personal all the time. Piece of shit. This is a common theme in relationships between addicts. When they aren't using, they have nothing that connects them. Tyler's version is different. There's much more to these supposed drug-induced chats than bonding. You think I look like Lana Del Rey? I don't believe it. You know what I look like? Shit. These aren't the only times Avriana confesses her deepest, darkest, most horrifying secrets. In fact, she also makes a shockingly damning statement to the police. All my kids are small. I mean, all, all our kids are small. Uh, even her. All my kids. I mean, she's not fat. They see my four-year-old. He's not fat. Small kids. He's small kids. She's right? she's she, she, she's not fat. What does that have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. She's not fat. What does that have to do with anything? That's right, Jules. Check my wish list. Okay, Patrick. Here, baby. I don't know how to do that. She ate? She's eating normally. I'd say. 
After such a slip of the tongue, oh it's clear that Adriana knows much more than she's letting on. Just how much stuff. does she know? That's Aww. the million dollar question. But detectives are determined oh my to get God. to the heart People of it. People are so sweet. They soon sense earphones. that it's time to try a different Oh my tactic. God, I got an air fryer. This one is sure to throw Adriana they off. They got everything? Oh, That's why they're asking for more stuff. <laughs> you guys are unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then from what you're saying. God bless you. I'm so blessed. <laughs> we really Thank are. you, Jesus. Jesus is good, isn't he? Oh my God, that's so sweet of you guys. Oh my God. Yeah, you guys are. <gasps> my 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 heart ring light. Yeah. <laughs> I can have proper lighting. Yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You're excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. I don't know why I deserve this so much, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, like, sincerely. Like, wow. It was all me. Oh, jeez. Oh, thank you, Patrick. God bless you. Thank you. Aw, thank you, Watermelon. The hater's gonna be mad about this one. Maybe, but I don't care. That was so sweet. Very nice. That was so sweet. Thank you. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. I can't wait to have proper lighting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm just going to keep doing true crime because I, I don't mind this so much. It's like right up my alley. Yeah, it's good. But this girl, she pisses me off. But thank you for that little, like, sweet moment. Thank you. Jesus bless you. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't feel like I deserve it. Yeah, you do, because you're going to use it, and you're going to make... You're gonna yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm going to use it for everything. You make good content. <laughs> yes, Absinthe. <laughs> I can't wait for them to prove it. Yeah. Yeah, it does mean cooking streams. This is going to be awesome. Very cool, dude. I'm s like, I thank you. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are just being just incredible right now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, my God, baby. I know. Uh, I, this, no. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? Sometimes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> the power of love. Oh, that's what he's doing. He's the power of love. The power of love. Do, 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 do. That's why. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? The power of love. That's so sweet of him. Like, people are being so sweet lately. Like, what happened? What's, what, what is this stuff? Mm. No, we have that. We have a chair for the kitchen, actually, for me. A rolling chair. Yeah. We actually have one. I know, air fryer. You know how much I love the air fryer? I love the air fryer. The best one ever. Aw, thank you. <laughs> if we're going to go with what he's saying and just his side of the story, um, that's not fair to you. When the detective attempts to play Adriana against Tyler, so he's sweet. using the self-serving tactic intended to motivate Adriana to tell her side of the story. 
As Avriana and Tyler are the only living individuals who know the truth behind Callie's death, Avriana has to wonder if Tyler is really talking. She's like, so Tyler is saying I'm a bad mom. Mm. Mm -hmm. She can't even keep her head up. She's just like, I am a bad mom. Mm -hmm. I am a bad mom at all. I'm a very good mom. You see, I just pop them. When they come near me, I just pop. You know, like that gopher game, pop. I'm a good mom, because I know how to play gopher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck this bitch, man. Bro. <laughs> it's a season of sharing and love. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, she'll show emotion with that. He's so sweet. <laughs> what was that? I moved and she got all whatever. Did you get noisy because he moved a little? She's like, no, I don't want to move. No, I think it's okay. She was afraid I was going to move her. Yeah, I know. Right. She's making noises. She thinks I'm going to move her. What girl? Calm down, little baby girl. It's okay. She's like, I'm so happy here. I don't want to leave. She doesn't want to go. She's a drama queen. She always cries yeah. every time you move her. I know. Like, no! <laughs> now you have to fill it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know. We got to think of stuff we need. We'll do that. After this stream, we'll, we'll be talking about that all night, and we'll add more stuff to it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. God bless you guys. You're going to be so blessed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Question she poses to the detective in response to his claim clearly shows her apprehension, and her reaction definitely is not lost on the detectives. The detective doesn't answer Avriana's question, but changes the subject and inquires as to how long she's been absent. They suspect there's a direct correlation between her supposed disconnection and Callie's death. You've been disconnected for the past how many, what would you say, weeks, months? She's like, I don't know. I don't know how long she's been gone. Who knows? I wanted my Coke. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, man. That's rough. It's criminal. Put a dress on the list. Okay. I will. Will do. This girl here, man. She ain't taking it. <laughs> I'm a good mom. There was cooking supplies on the list, actually. Yep. That woman, man. She's a good mom. And then, where's your child? I don't know. No. <laughs> that cocaine was good, though. I got me some good coke. Oh my god. What the hell? Significant or something where you're you're gauging it with your fingers like, okay, since this time it's been this many months. So what is that? How many months? I mean really I probably after I had my my son. Okay. Avriana and Tyler's second son was born the previous October, six months earlier. It seems those last several months were quite a whirlwind. A new baby in addition to two other small children to care for. And all the while, balancing a dark secret. Detectives are starting to make some headway. Ariana's story has suddenly changed. Now she claims that over the past few months, Callie has been complaining of stomach pain and was vomiting roughly twice a month. 
Of course, she wasn't taken to a doctor for any type of evaluation. Damn, I don't really. I don't really, really try. Was she poisoning the child? Maybe. Maybe. I can get food stuff from all around the world. You need to make beef Wellington. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Beef Wellington? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, my babies. She's such a good baby girl. Yeah, she's a good baby. No, I think I I think she was poisoning the little girl. Yeah. She was complaining of stomach pain and, and puking twice a week. She was probably just doing it slowly. Possibly. This woman here's got Munchausen's by proxy. But she's a stepmother. Yeah, but she can still do that. Yeah. Make beef Wellington on stream. Yes. The fryer videos, yeah. The deep fryer is so cool. It's so easy to make a good meal with a deep fryer. Air fryer. The cat likes your scent. That's why they're always around you. That's probably it. The baby girl. They love adjacents. My baby. Okay, so what did you try from the internet? Sergeant Tony, huh? Watch what she ate. Tyler takes us to the month of April, just a few weeks before police were dispatched to Joe's storage unit, and gives his account of Callie's recent health issues. You know, she lived up last time on the night, and she said, you know, I'm a family doctor, you know, I, I take care of my family, and stay at home, you know, that's what I do. You know, I can figure it out, right, so. How are, how are you disconnecting yourself? Are you just, you're disconnecting yourself from... Can I just laugh? Everybody else deal with her. I'm just like, okay. Hey, I just feel tired. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, just like, do you Maybe it's your constant drug use, why you feel so tired all the time. I don't know. Taking coke, which is a upper, and, and then it, like, wearing off, it, it can't be good for your, uh, tiredness. Can you react to the video? I want you to. Oh, Lord. I will. Just send it in my DMs. I don't know if Munchausen or if she's trying to poison her to death with no evidence at the end, so no trace. Are you going to do cooking streams now? Probably, yes. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Whatever. Why not? It'll be fun. It's part of her health. Not doing so good. Did I tell me to the reason for her health? I guess so. The detectives are now establishing and getting on record Avriana's knowledge that Callie had potentially developed an illness recently. And Avriana did nothing to help her. And obviously, there was no home remedy that could save Callie. The detectives apply more pressure as they confront Avriana. They've grown tired of going around in circles with her. So, an important question, too, like we've asked in the last, you know, I'm going to ask you, where is your daughter? I don't know. Let me see. Here's the thing. You told us, you know, earlier, <laughs> Tyler took her. <laughs> Drag not. You guys better be doing cooking videos because... <laughs> I'm going to be reviewing them and using the super chat money to <laughs> to fund my next cruise with Mrs. Drag. All right, Drag. Understandable. No, I know that's why they brought, bought that stuff. They want to know how to cook. Where do you DM me? Um, can you put my... Yeah, thank you. Wait, He'll put it in the chat. What, what, where, what? Um, my Instagram. I don't know how you get your link. Oh, shit. One minute. I'll do it real quick. Weird. 
like I go to your page and then it's like. Wait, wait, wait! I'll do it real quick. I'll do it real quick. I'll do it real quick. I'm good with the stuff. You can contact me here. No joke, I got nutritional yeast because of you. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. I have to react to a video. All right, I'll do that tomorrow. And Carrie Gold, yes, Carrie Gold. I gotta, th I gotta, I need to find my notepad. Let's go. I have my pen, but I need to find my notepad. And I need to write down like recipes and stuff. Okay. Yep. Cool. Where it is, people. Okay. We know that's not the case. Okay. Is Carrie Gold Butter worth it? Completely. One hundred percent. It's worth it. Everyone who has tried Carrie Gold had said thank you for telling me about this. I didn't know butter could taste this way. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's all I use is carry gold. Ever since my husband and I did the bulletproof coffee every mo morning at one time. Yep. Oh man, now I need to get it in the grocery shop and yeah, just try it first with like some toast. You won't regret it. Definitely. Or, or even what's even best is Italian bread. You don't toast it and you just put butter on it. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you won't regret it. <laughs> it's almost like cheese. It is. It's really good. It's so creamy. I know. We love some Kerry Gold. Yeah. Love. Watermelon. Do you like Kerry Gold? She loves cream. You love cream. She loves cream. You're cream girls? Yeah. You're cream girls? She's a pretty cream girl. She's like, oh, I love my cream. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious. Uh, she's a good girl. We know. You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? What we're saying is that we know that you and Tyler both took her over to California. So that's why I'm asking. You come back here without your daughter. Wow, they even looked up the CCTV footage. Yeah. Why don't you come back with your daughter? You come back with... You come back with... But you don't come back with her. Why? You come back with your daughter. We see the detectives utilize us. Wow, this woman's really fucking stupid. She never thought of an excuse to give. I guess not. Like, at least most people think of an excuse. She's, she's just completely silent. Mm -hmm. You didn't even think it up, did you? Stacia says, love to watermelons and gavins. Yeah. Watermelons, you're getting loves. You're getting loves, girls. Yeah. You're getting loves. Yes. Yes, I love. Oh. Oh. We get the chins. Oh, you feel good. Yes. She's a good girl. She is. She's so pretty. I know. She loves that blanket. She does. Step of the re technique known as positive confrontation here. When they confront Avery with the fact that they you. know Callie didn't come back Jesus from California, bless you too. she averts her eyes and is silent. If she truly had nothing to do with Callie's disappearance, she likely would have adamantly denied it well, instead she froze of sitting up. in silence. 
As Avriana appears to be contemplating something, perhaps a confession, she poses the next question. You may talk to Tyler. Yes, yes. And my concern with Tyler would be if he, he is saying something that is putting it on you. That's my concern. So I don't want to get that what you I want to get your version and your side independently. The detectives finally make it known that her act isn't working. And, like Avriana, they're also privy to some horrendous information. So what do you guys know? We know about the bags. We know about the barrel. We know about the storage unit. We know about the storage unit. We know about your trip. Okay. There's no going back at this point. It's out in the open now. Hi, Red and Cowboy. Man, she's acting. Yes, make, make her think he's putting it all on her so she tells the truth or starts making up a story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Catch this woman. Like, when he's, when she goes to her husband, she's always like, he said what? Huh? And and she's, like, getting more vicious every time. Yeah. See? They see the narc in her. Yeah. They see the narc in her. Mm. I don't like this woman at all. It's raining in Ontario? Not snowing? What is going on? It's 60 degrees here today. I know. It's 60. That's wild. Yep, it's building. She's not going to be able to t take much more or she just wants to sleep. That might be it. I'm crazy. I am so the idea of revealing what happened to Callie seems to bring what? up real emotion. But it may it just be that Avriana is only okay. concerned for herself and is aware that she's likely yeah. going to jail after this interview. The latter is the more likely explanation given her demeanor up to this point. It's also likely that she's thinking of her two biological children, as she knows she's at risk of not being able to see them again. Whatever the explanation may be, we'll finally hear two accounts of the recent events surrounding the death of little Callie. Unspeakable details will be brought to light, but the lack of consensus between the stories will leave you reeling, wondering where the horrific truth actually lies. Really? Please be forewarned. The details you're about to hear are quite disturbing. That's gotta be really bad then. Oh no. Well, you got a trigger warning. What did that stupid bitch do? Oh, these parents are despicable. Ah. Oh. oh yeah, forgot she has a child and didn't hear she has two. Yeah. Those children are in foster care now. Messed up, dude. No, she has no empathy. I, ugh. <clears throat> Women like her. <laughs> continues listing off the chores he did upon arriving home, including cleaning up after and walking the dog. Uh, and then she said, you know, there's not money, so you... So, uh, you know, she's going to be a good girl. She's going to be a good girl, man. She brings out the different hands, you know, and she's like, you know, she's like, you know, she's like, you know, and she's like, and she's like, and she's like, Why didn't you call 911? That's always the question. When they teach you to do CPR, 
the first thing you should be doing is have someone call 911. It's like the first thing. It's like call 911 and then issue CPR. Mm -hmm. Help someone call 911. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're right, Autumn. I don't know. They're actually riding cowboy. You don't have to replay it, actually. They're actually getting into what exactly she did, because we don't know what she did. Mm -hmm. Actually. They get very bad. Yeah, all we've seen is her get rare, wore down. Yeah. <laughs> as Tyler describes it. Amongst his attempts to administer CPR, the dog's panicked barking, and the other two children crying out for their parents behind the closed door of a bedroom. I can try CPR, you know. I told her it's not working, you know. We didn't call an ambulance. Yeah, for some reason, we can't turn it. She's not going to call an ambulance, you know. I can't go to prison, you know. Oh, you're worried about going to prison? Your child is dying. They could revive her. Like, you should have called the police, the ambulance when it started. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That's the first thing you do is call 911 and then administer frickin' CPR. Like, that's proper CPR training. So sick of people reporting. People need to stop reporting to me over what other people do. I don't care. Thank you. That's why I banned a certain person, because I said this several times and I'm really tired of that person. Ugh. I can't call an ambulance and I can't help her, you know. And she's not in trouble from it. She's still in the pantry, she's around the wall, right next to the pantry. Tyler then claimed that he attempted to leave the apartment to seek help from a neighbor. But Avriana blocked the door and prevented him from leaving. My heart is beating out of my chest, you know. And I'm just talking, you know, please breathe, you know. Please breathe, you know. Because she's not breathing, it's not working, she's not responding. She's not talking, you know. Her eyes are open, but she's not blinking, you know. I don't know how much time has, you know, between that and the. When I stopped, it was an hour and a half, it was three hours, I don't know. It was too late. Stepped away and 
checked on the other children at this point. Blind. These two are why I sometimes believe parent a parent should be governed. That that might be true. That okay. might be true, man. Yeah. toddler alone you know especially a toddler toddlers get into everything I would think so. and a baby can technically smother themselves I never left my babies alone I only started left them alone when I knew they were responsible enough to be left alone. Yeah. God. Yes, yes, ma'am. I've been searching for a Christmas card with $150 my toddler took and put somewhere. Probably the garbage for two days. Oh, my God, Autumn. I am so sorry. Oh, shit. Oh. See, that's why you never leave a toddler alone. It could be so quick. Like, it's just a simple, like, turn of the back and they're into something. A toddler will keep you moving. Oh, I'm so sorry, Autumn. You'll laugh about it in a few years. <laughs> You know, you little shit, you know, when you were two years old, you took a, you took a gift card worth $150 and threw it away. Just gone. I swore I hit it well. <laughs> yeah, I hope you find it. It's so adorably tragic. I hope you find the card. I bet the baby put it somewhere silly and you'll get a laugh when you find it. Yeah, exactly. Probably. <laughs> That's a good point. She has a story to tell him when he gets older. Yep. <laughs> My best friend's kid once threw away her phone. <gasps> oh, babies. They like to hear the sound of the knock-in. All you got was a gift card to Lawn House Horn Steakhouse. 
That's a good gift. Yeah, they're, that, they got good food, man. Yeah, man. Longhorn Steakhouse is good. We know you love your steak, bro. Yeah. Yeah, firecracker shrimp they got. Especially when children learn they can flush things down the toilet. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Mighty. Look! Marbles! I remember the one time in the habitat, Zach took the, his Batman. He had a Batman figure, and he just put it in the sink, and he let the sink run. And it was it almost flooded the whole apartment. <laughs> you can't do that again, okay? Don't do that again. Uh, that could be real bad. I know, oh, right? Oh, my God, that could have been real bad. $60,000 worth of damage. You'll have a good story to remind them. Exactly. Exactly. Let's just say Zachary kind of has been somewhat of a financial menace for Jason in a way. <laughs> if I were, i just let it go. Okay. I'm not... Just let it go. It's it's okay. Just let it go. The sixteen thousand dollars. Let it go. Oh my god. Let it go. Yeah. All right. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Just kid shit. Hey, there's nothing on your Amazon. Yeah, list. Pe they people it's bought got it bought out. out. Yeah. I should probably take that down. Unpin it. Yeah, for now. How do I unpin this? Unpin right at the top. this message. Yeah. There we go. For now. And we'll we'll get more stuff on it. Yeah. Did Zach use his debit card? Sixteen thousand yeah, dollars worth not... for an internet game. I really don't wanna think about that. Did I see your DM? No, I didn't. One minute. Oh, I see. Yeah, that happened. That's what you want me to do? All right. And it was non-refundable. Do you get that? I called the car company and said this was not authorized. And they said, too bad. It's, it's non-refundable because it was all in-game purchases. So I just have like 15 grand of debt. No, they didn't refund it. They refused to. So it's just out there. I ain't never paying that. Whatever. Unless I get rich, I ain't never paying that. Yeah, dude. I, I, I'll I'll totally review it. <laughs> I'll just review it beforehand. I gotta I gotta look at some parts. See if I have to cut out some things. Just make sure it's internet safe. You know. That was a hell of a time. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, though. I thought that was lost. Thank you. No, that isn't how it works with, with like, in-game purchases, Celeste. You could just buy and buy and buy and buy. It was crazy. So. Cheering, child rearing is fun. When I was potty training my daughter, she decided to poop outside. I ran to clean it up. But my daughter scooped it and ate it in a matter of seconds. Ah! Dogs are so gross! Uh, she, even Watermelon was like, fuck that shit. Watermelon. She's like, that's gross. Like, fuck dogs. I'm gone. <laughs> Did you hear her complain? <laughs> Man. That pissed her off. Yeah, that pissed Watermelon off. <laughs> She was not into that shit. It's like, I'm going over here. <laughs> yeah, that's what she well, said. Watermelon says, dogs drool, cats roll. That's pretty much, man. She did do that. It's the catitude. <laughs> <laughs> the dog tried to eat diapers? Ew. Oh, my God. That's rough. Oh, dogs are gross. They can be. They can be really gross. <sighs> I'm just always going to be cat, uh, uh, cut out to be a cat person. 
That's just it. Well, I was a dog person. I'm both. I just like both. Animals. Yeah. I like them both. Thank God we don't have any infants. I, I would hate to see a diaper being eaten by a dog. Oh I would vom. That's gross. I would vom, and I could never look at the dog the same. Oh. Ugh. I love both cats and dogs. I'm not too picky. <laughs> yeah, I like both. <clears throat> and yes, even the attempt, blah. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> of tampering with evidence by disposing of the items in a dumpster. The horror continued in the days following Callie's death. Tyler asserts that the day after Callie died, Avriana had devised a plan plan to cover it all up and as you're about to hear it's absolutely diabolical and she wants to go down for it and she wants to she wants to she wants to burn it under a bridge near a woman and I thought I was going to get off and I was going to get off and I was going to get off and I was going to get off I'm doing this my way and they get my way. I'm going to leave, you know. I'm not going to pray for this. I'm not going to live my son's, you know. I didn't think I would say my son was safe, you know. Tyler is rationalizing. Then why didn't he just say something? Then why didn't you call the police? 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 Oh my god, you were so worried about your own self. I don't know, Autumn. Especially it was his own child. Who wouldn't call 911 for them? Yeah, exactly. Man. In his behavior, but his claim about how he didn't feel that he or his sons were safe doesn't fit with going along with Avriana's plan to get rid of the child's remains. If you found that plan disturbing, you'll be appalled at Avriana's ideas that came next. And then she said, matter of fact, I'm just, I should just put the bag in the, in the Sacramento River, you know, leave it on the train track, you know, and then she said no, because. Oh my God. How is this man even... Like, I don't, I don't believe what he's saying. Like, how could he even, like, listen to this woman talk about his daughter like this? Yeah, he even helped her put her in the bag. This is crazy. Even if she gets ran over by trains, they can still identify her, you know. So she said, no, I'm just going to burn her body, you know. The thought that Avriana allegedly concocted such barbaric ways to dispose of Callie's body is beyond comprehension. She even devised a morbid plan to ensure Tyler wouldn't abandon her or turn her in during the interim between Callie's death and her body being left at the storage unit. I don't know what else. Oh my god, that's how she's talking about his daughter. Call the police, dude! This is fucking insane. They wanted the, her body to get hit by a train and just liquefy or something? Like, what the fuck? Pulverize the corpse. This was your child. Holy sh Jesus. Crushed. I, yeah, I guess so. What the fuck, man? <sighs> wow. That's messed up shit.
it go with it which one I will Patrick we're gonna do that tonight after I get off this <laughs> talk about this innocent soul like it's just an object is gross putting the child in the trunk like used luggage yeah i i can't insane like how <laughs> how how can you say you love your child and do that no way no like fuck this dude he let all this stuff happen you can get acid that's the next thing mm -hmm. <laughs> Followed through and got the bin. He explains what came next. facility autumn because people were smelling something they put her in a blue barrel in a storage facility and left her there I, I just had a strong belief that he would Tyler's story continues along the same illogical path it's been traveling down the detective asks why Tyler went back to Sacramento on the day after Callie's remains were located in Joe's unit okay but what's your your reason for going down there on the day you got custody, okay, wait. Oh, you know, I had a strong feeling that he would look that night or the next day because of the great problems that I'm leaving, right, the suspicions I'm raising, his daughter's worried, right, she's there, so she's wondering what the hell's going on. So, I knew that he would look. I just knew he would look. So you were counting on being caught that day, yeah? Tyler portrays himself to be a victim of the situation, but it's clear that he was deeply involved. After all, starvation doesn't occur overnight. In fact, the CPS investigation confirms that there were concerns about Callie having been malnourished years before she died. Evidence is clearly suggesting that this was no accident or illness, but rather a calculated plan. In addition to information detectives obtained from the CPS report and the interrogations, Two compelling accounts from witnesses emerged. Both revealed the horrifying true story about what actually happened to... It's awful seeing your babies hungry. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so happy the boys are safe now. Mm -hmm. Where they are. They can eat and have full bellies. No, I don't care if I have to work till the day I die. I will make sure those boys eat for the rest of their life. How would I get rid of a body? I wouldn't. Period. I'm not like that. Oh, they're so good. 
and so happy. I love them so much. I'm just happy they're living their life the way they want to right now. Instead of being like so... Callie! <sighs> worried about shit. Yeah, worried about shit. Yeah. yeah. Worried about shit. Yeah. Behind the closed doors of Avriana and Tyler's apartment. It all began. Fuck. Dan when Jayla, an old friend of Avriana's, traveled to Reno for a visit in early December of 2017. So every time I meet with Jayla and start to drink and they call me in the middle of the night, not in the middle of the night, like 11 p.m., 12 maybe, to come pick them up, take them back home. Jayla frees them literally and then they run and me or in the bedroom. Hey babe, can you give me a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just go. Except Tyler left a few important elements out of his story. Some sponges. Jayla and I asked um, investigators that she saw your boys. You can yeah. you just search for items and then you scroll down and you see Adam. Tyler is likely okay, rubbing his good. foot in an attempt to release nervous energy. He's feeling uncomfortable about discussing where Callie supposedly was during this visit. Where was the dog at? The dog was in the cage in the bathroom. Alright. Did you ever see the dog? So happens that Avriana had described the family dog quite differently. Do you give a kiss? Oh, yeah. Never? No, yeah, not he's vicious dog. No, no, he's not vicious. Not a dog. Not a dog. Sweet as a little boy. He's so sweet, but he gets learned. <laughs> Tyler's claims that they kept their dog caged within the bathroom and that it was never seen or heard by a house guest isn't plausible. The detective digs deeper into the issue of Callie's whereabouts <laughs> during Jayla's visit. For the time that you were at the apartment, Tyler, did you ever, like, ever, um, I'm sleeping at all hours of the day. When I wasn't there. But I did at night, right? Yeah, she left in the morning. Okay. It was roughly one month after Callie's body was found that Jayla spoke with the detective. Her story was chilling. Jayla stayed at the apartment for only one night, but it was more than ample time to observe that things were terribly wrong. Of the apartment's two bathrooms, she was only permitted to enter the one located in the master bedroom. The other bathroom was strictly off limits, as Tyler and Avriana were housing their vicious dog Maverick within the confines of its walls. At least, that's the excuse Tyler and Avriana had concocted, according to Jayla. It's interesting to know that this completely conflicts with Avriana's previous statement, that Maverick is the sweetest little boy and great with children. Jayla never saw the dog, nor heard noises from him while there. There you go. She also never saw Callie, but did see Tyler and Avriana's little boys, whom Avriana doted on. Jayla attested to the fact that Avriana harbored hatred toward Leoni due to the pure and simple fact that she had given birth to Callie. Tyler having gained custody of Callie wasn't enough. In her efforts to deprive Leoni of merely watching her little girl grow up from a distance, Avriana forbade any posting of pictures and videos of Callie on social media. This behavior Jayla describes is definitely consistent with the idea that perpetrators of domestic violence often show very jealous and possessive behaviors, evidenced by her feelings toward Leoni. During Jayla's short visit, the two also met up with Tyrese, an acquaintance who had attended high school with both women. The detective caught up with him several months later in January of 2019. And boy, did he have a scandalous story to tell. He told officers that he and Avriana allegedly engaged in an affair from December of 2017 through February of 2018. Tyrese estimated that they had secretly met more than 20 times at Avriana and Tyler's apartment. Wow. Part of his story mirrored Jayla's. He too was forbidden from entering the main bathroom. Avriana's excuse at this time was that it was dirty and messy. Unlike many of her other statements, this particular one held some truth based on the condition of the apartment when the detectives arrived to speak with Avriana. Tyree stated that he witnessed the two little boys in the apartment during his visits. However, he never saw so much as a trace of Callie. According to Avriana, she was at Grandma's house. Of course, we know this to be a lie. Evidently, Tyrese had been following the what? Media's reporting on the case. At one point during his interview, Tyrese broke down, stating, 
She did that. That is so wrong. But did that for so long. She would not let me in that room. With these two witness accounts in mind, there is a strong possibility that Avriana and Tyler kept Callie imprisoned within the main bathroom. Maybe oh they sedated her with medication so she wouldn't cry and couldn't be heard by Jailer or Tyrese. It's also a possibility that Callie was so sick due to being chronically malnourished that she wasn't physically able to yell or cry. And Avriana and Tyler didn't want anyone to bear witness to her alarming physical condition. In addition to neglect, Callie's subjection to cruel, relentless abuse was, sadly, the only life she ever knew. Shortly after Callie's death, Tyler reveals that he and Avriana used cocaine, during which he alleged Avriana revealed her deepest and darkest secrets and the truth about Callie's death. Why would you do that? And I will call when I'll be at work. You're when I'm staying. When we're staying out here, I'm working two jobs, and I'll call. So I'll do my kids, you know, because I miss them. I'm not really spending time with them. Just because of the abuse, and she's saying that she would leave in her room. Well, you know, when I called she would go in there, and she'd get out of the room, and she'd be up. I'd be on the phone, and she'd be telling her, but save me, you know, that she's playing with her brother and that she's eating, you know, and that she's, she's watching TV. And he'd rather say she would have a lie. And she would be right there. She would be right in her arms, in her room. <laughs> and then, you know, she said, she would cry out for you. And she and me around and go in there and tell him, you know, he doesn't love you, you know. You know why he loves you. The person that gave birth to you doesn't even love you, you know. You know, he doesn't love you that he did to be here with you. So she shut up, you know, she would close the door on him. This gut-wrenching account of emotional and verbal abuse would be extremely damaging to a child. Callie likely felt very isolated, as if she was an outsider. Mm-hmm. I see that, definitely. Depression, dude. And that's drugs, too. Mm -hmm. That's so sad, dude. That, like, really seriously, like, gets you depressed just looking at that stuff. Yeah. It really does. Like, I feel so bad over that. What are you going to do? Yeah, they both knew she was dying in that room and they did nothing. 
they did absolutely nothing and it's infuriating like how could you do that to a baby like how could you severely do that to a baby babies are everything You know what? I don't think I'll ever get people. I don't think I'll ever get people. How come someone allows their children to live in filth like that? Depression. Drugs. Mental illness. They needed help. If you were a criminal investigator, psychologist person, how would you approach this guy about it? trying to help them that's how there are photos of Callie's clothing and few belongings that have been left in the bathtub why was her clothes in the bathroom? Did they leave her in the bathroom? No, my kids didn't starve. It was just more like they weren't eating as much as they should be for their age. You know what I mean? Because of the money. Yeah, money was hard back in that time. I don't ever want them to go through that again. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm just going to continue to work, 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 work for everything I do. She was caged like a dog. Oh, my God. I can get, I, I get that. Teen, teenagers can eat a lot while growing. Yeah, and I want them to eat as much as they can. You over here working like Rihanna. That's right. If pimping myself out makes me money, then I'll pimp myself out for money. That easy. I want my kids. Mama is coming home. Clearly, it's very possible that the crate and food in the bathroom were for Kelly and not the dog, who seems to be the scapegoat for some of the compelling evidence. Even the existence of a dog still isn't entirely clear. The detective asked... I don't know. That may be human poop from the little girl trying to get attention. <sighs> My God, baby. I know. A baby. No one's buying? You, you sure? Anyway. Just seems like it hit a hard point. You related, my bad, if not true. Nah. 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 Tyler, the direct question he's been building I bet up they to. were eating, though. Even deep down, she hated her. She thinks that she had some sort of and with that the motive behind this whole
catastrophe is finally confirmed, and it's consistent with information Jayla also provided. Avriana harbored a pure hatred for little Callie. It had manifested from the unwarranted contempt she'd always harbored toward Leonie, and it was revealed in the abuse she inflicted on her daughter. As the interview was nearing a close, the detective confronts Ty- So you didn't like the ex, so you took it out on the little girl? Fuck that bitch, man. Give her the death penalty. She don't deserve to live. And she don't deserve to- she don't- she doesn't deserve to even grieve that child. That baby, I think you sympathize. Yeah, I do. Exactly, Stacia. on what was arguably the most disturbing aspect of Callie's condition when her body was discovered. As you can recall, the responding officers at the scene of the storage facility referred to Callie as an infant at times. That's how small she was. They thought she was an infant. Bullshit. Very young, like, like, months, we're talking. We're talking. Six months ish. Oh my less. god, they don't even know. Oh yeah, wearing a, like, looks like jammies or something like that. Horrifyingly. Oh, so, she wasn't a skeleton. Was a mere 16 pounds. You remember when I told you that William was almost a 10 pound baby? That's six pounds more. That was a toddler, dudes. That was a toddler. These people are disgusting. According to the medical examiner, clearly she was the size of an infant and just a few months shy of her sixth birthday. She died an excruciating death of starvation that was a long, drawn-out process. It's likely the misery spanned three agonizing years. With this revelation, Avriana's interview isn't ending in the way she'd hoped, as you'll see. There's still an ongoing investigation, all right? We as detectives have to do our due diligence for the sake of this entire case, for the sake of, okay? There's still some things that we need to wait on for the autopsy and things of that nature. But at this moment in time, right now, we're gonna go ahead and book you out of county jail, okay? For child neglect. For child neglect, okay? That's gonna be your charge, all right? Good. and starved her to death. Yeah. 
It's scary to think she's only crying for her punishment. No remorse on a crime. No! I don't deserve this! Ugh. Avriana is just now realizing that she will face punishment for what she has done. Because you're Not a bitch. Once in all the hours of interrogation did Avriana show this kind of remorse for Callie. This emotion is only for herself. In the end, there was a small semblance of justice for the little girl whose life had only consisted of suffering. Yeah. Tyler eventually gave up on his claims of ignorance and reverted back to his original story. He pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after ten years. Avriana Enoch, formerly Anderson, prior to the couple's divorce in August of 2019, had a different outcome. She stood trial in late July of 2021, after a judge rejected her proposed plea agreement. On August 5th, she was convicted of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole Ah, uh, I hope she doesn't years. get it. Yeah. That woman should suffer for eternity what she did to that baby. Yeah, <sighs> Those babies. Horrible. Those babies. I gotta go to the bathroom. Can you can you yeah. hold the chat? Yeah. I'm sorry guys. I don't think I peed through this whole street. Yeah, I don't think you did either. <clears throat> That's impressive. Yeah, I know. He had a Red Bull on top of him. <sighs> yeah, so that was a horrific story. What's up? <clears throat> we might be going after this. I'm not sure. <sighs> it was a very sad story. And, and, you know, I made my mistake, you know, but I have definitely learned. I learned from my mistake that you don't do violence to children ever, you know. <laughs> You're hilarious, drag. No, I try to be a good boy, drag, you know. Stay away from that shit. This was a really, it was a, this was a rough one to watch. Very, very low, it's like low vibrations shit. <laughs> yeah, it, absolutely. That's, that's right, Stacy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that's up to the girl, I don't know. Are we, are we, still, are we keeping going? I don't know. Do you want to? I don't care. It's up to you. It's your stream. If you want to, I can. I, it's, I guess it's up to the audience at that point. Oh, should I keep going? Bro. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> 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 yeah. Go for the gold. Dun 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 Kind of calm down those emotions, and that's can oatmeal be used as a glue? Frankly, I don't know. I've never seen this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it works to have decent 
from what I remember. Like, you would think oatmeal would be good as a glue. I mean, it sticks to your bowl pretty good. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's another glue video. So, I've used a lot of different things as glue. I've used... Come on. Oh my god. I've used glue. I've used different candies as glue. Can you stop messing up for a minute? I've used Jolly Ranchers as glue. And I feel like there's something else I'm missing. I feel like I'm trying to use something else as glue. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to try to use oatmeal as glue. Anyone that eats oatmeal knows that whenever, while you're eating oatmeal, Say if you don't finish all of it and you just leave it in the bowl and it sits there for a few hours, mm -hmm. it dries super hard like concrete. And then you have to get like a knife and try to like basically chip it out of the bowl so that you can wash the bowl. So I feel like oatmeal could make a very good glue. So we're going to put it through all of the standard tests. We got the wood blocks, we got the bricks, and then we have the two by fours. Just like all the other videos, the bricks and the two by fours, I'll glue them together. Or I'll put oatmeal between them and push them together end to end. And then I'll put them on some cinder blocks and put weights in the middle until okay. they break. And then for the blocks, I'll put the oatmeal in the oh. middle, push these together, and then we'll hook the crane scale up and we'll pull them apart and see how much they hold. So let's make some oatmeal. Yay. These packets out. We need a bowl. And if you didn't see, this is the apples and cinnamon oatmeal, just because that's what I had. To my audience, to the chat, what's your favorite? oatmeal flavor. Mm. I think mine is the old-fashioned strawberries and cream. Mm. What's your favorite oatmeal mm. flavor? I'd like to know. Maple brown sugar. Yeah, someone said brown sugar or maple, yeah. That's my favorite. Maple brown sugar, peaches yes. and cream. We got another maple brown sugar. Two people hate oatmeal, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I love the oatmeals. And I know that this stuff dries like concrete. So we'll put one packet in here. And then we need two thirds cup of water. I feel like this is kind of turning into a cooking show. Well, I think right. most people know how to make water. fucking oatmeal. Now, which got no. And just like that, two minutes later, we have a piping hot oatmeal. I don't know if this is going to be enough. I might have to do another batch. Oh. I'll start putting this on our blocks. All right. I wonder if it's going to work. Yeah. Man, I can taste that right now. Oh, I love oatmeal. Yes, his name is Tyler too. Yes, he is the same guy who had the the freeze dried candy. I love how we're watching oatmeal being put on a wooden block with you. It's better than the drama. <laughs> He puts it on bricks, too. Ah! Oh, ew! Now you're wondering what else could be glue? obviously are going to be clamped and then the bricks I just have them you know just sitting on top of each other just they're heavy so that should be all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna it looks like a science experiment a kid could would do at home that would be a good science experiment you could do with your kid at home actually be, because it'd be like can you make oatmeal can you make glue out of oatmeal let's go see you know, but you know the secret and he doesn't, so it'd be like a wow, thank you, Autumn, for the hundred bits. Put these dry for a full seven days, and we'll come back and we'll put them through all the tests. All right, guys, while we're waiting for that oatmeal to dry, I'm going to give you a short product review. I'm going to be reviewing this pillow. 
As you can see, this is a wedge pillow. Yeah. This pillow is advertised on Amazon as a soft memory foam pillow. So, I needed the pillow. I wanted a memory foam pillow. This came up. This is what I bought. This pillow is not a soft memory foam pillow. As you can tell, it's hard. This pillow is hard. This is not something you want to sleep on. You would be better off sleeping on a stack of two by fours than you would be sleeping on this pillow. If someone broke into your house in the middle of the night, you can probably. You know, I'm getting awfully suspicious what he's going to do with that pillow and that mannequin. He did make the mannequin stare at him. It's like, dude, I know what you're about to do. You even got me here naked. You couldn't even put some clothes on me, you son of a bitch. He's about to do something incredibly awful to this mannequin. I can tell. We're going to find out. He killed him with this pillow. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. <laughs> you see, this is not a pillow that you want to sleep on. I give this pillow zero out of ten. <laughs> Alright, so it's been seven days since we put the oatmeal on our, <laughs> and our wood blocks. So now the only thing left to do is to test them. So the first thing we're going to be testing is these wood blocks, <laughs> these one by one squares. Let's get the crane scale and the weight set up and start testing them. But before that, I want you to leave a comment down below how much weight do you think these blocks are going to hold? 30 pounds. Now let's get started. All right, we have our blocks right here. Let's see how much they can hold. It's 30 pounds. I say 30 pounds. Wait, wait, wait. What do you, how much do you think oatmeal, how many pounds that oatmeal will have? I say 30 pounds. 10. 10? Yeah. You say 10 pounds. Yeah. We got anything higher? Anyone willing to do higher than 30 pounds? I don't know. Which one? 45, Celeste? 50? 5. Ah, 617 said 5 pounds. Yeah. 12 pounds. Dragnaut says 12. Is it attached to a brick? No, it's attached to wood pieces. We'll, we'll find out. Alright, now let's see how much they can hold. Well, that was little. Uh, not that much. Still pretty impressive, though. 70 pounds?! No! That's not. For oatmeal? Oatmeal! That's insane. Can stick to something. Has a 70. Wow! That's crazy. Wow! 70 pounds! That's impressive. You, yeah, oatmeal can be glue. Yeah can be a pretty decent glue. We were all off. Yeah. All right, let's see the other pieces. All right, now we're moving on to testing our two by fours. And if you've been around here, you know how this works. In case you don't frequent the channel, how this test works is I just take these two by fours, put them right here between these two center blocks, I'll put another 2x4 in the middle just to keep all of the force on the center. And then we're just going to add weights on top of it. So, first we'll do 5 pounds. Okay. Ten pounds. All right. It's right on the center. Twenty pounds. No! Thirty pounds? Forty pounds? This is nuts! Fifty pounds? Alright, so we'll take some of these off. We'll get 225s. 225. 225s on here. Okay. Oh, I think I heard a crack. Oh, you heard a crack? Oh, shit. 55. Oh, it's gone. Yep. 50, 55. That's when it broke. 55. 
Well, sadly, there's not going to be the third experiment with the bricks because, as you can see, the bricks have fallen apart. So they well, weren't going to hold much well, weight. Well, I would think so anyway because bricks are, like, more porous. Yeah. So it has more, like, weak points to it. But that's insane that it can take that much weight, though. Yeah. It's just fucking oatmeal. Oh. Anyway, because they were just sitting like this on the table, and I just picked them up just to try to move them to another table, and they just completely fell apart. So even if I did get to test them, they probably would have only held, like, two, three, four pounds probably. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So as far as our original question, can oatmeal be used as a glue? Kind of. It, it definitely did more than I expected. Lifting uh, 70 pounds with the little wood blocks and 50 to 55 pounds on the 2x4s, that was definitely a lot more than I expected. <laughs> Somewhere I had higher hopes for it just because I know that whenever you eat it and you leave it in a bowl and it dries, it, it dries so hard. Yeah. So I figured that it would, it would hold a little bit more, but I'm also not too surprised because it's oatmeal. It's, it's, it's not a glue. I had fun making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. With what you want to see me test Well, it. now we know that oatmeal can be used as a glue. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta find something. Mm. Alright, let's see. Maybe R look at some RCS. See what they've done. RCS? Yeah, man. RCS? Death Door. The soup man who dissolved 500 victims from cartels. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Throughout his decade with two cartels, El Pozolero, or the Soup Man, dissolved up to a thousand bodies in vats of acid. Breaking Bad is nothing compared to real life. When he was finally arrested, a horrible stench filled his room. He told the police officers he was making seafood soup. Yeah, oh, Jesus. that was seafood soup. Really? So abstain from eating any kind of soup as you watch this outrageous video. He never into the story of Santiago Meza, aka mm. El Pozolero. Movies often show the glamorous side of cartels, the money, power, and status that only the top of the pyramid gets to live in. But behind the scenes, few things are as dark, brutal, and downright gruesome as cartels disposing of their enemies' bodies. Santiago Meza Lopez had a modest background. He was a poor farmer's boy and liked animals. In fact, it was his love of animals that brought him to the cartels. What? That and a desperate need for cash. Santiago started working with the Ariane Felix cartel in 1996. He tended to their horses and did their masonry work. It was honest work that simply paid better compared to anything he could do on his farm. But you know how cartels promise you endless riches for just a little bit of dirty work? That's always the hook. Take a threat or carry out a sketchy drug deal within months, you'll be rich. Sadly, Santiago fell into this trap, and before long, he was conducting narcotics deals for Ariano Felix. Ah, First, dude. he was their dealer. Then he was their drug office keeper. He was disciplined and dedicated, and Felix encouraged this by promoting him. As he surveilled the depots around Tijuana toward the end of the century, the Arellano cartel started a bloody war with the notorious Sinaloa cartel. Both cartels wanted control over the same trafficking routes into the U.S., but there's nothing simple about cartel fights. Constant attacks, kidnappings, and assassinations were terrorizing Mexico. Dissolving them that way is much quicker than than using something like lie in the ground. I guess so. So messed up. This is actually really good, like, uh, graphics and shit. <laughs> Watermelon. <laughs> 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 Such a drama queen. She's funny, you know. Tell Rev that someone is praying for him. I see darkness that some can't see. I see the pain. It bubbles and he likes me. He holds it in. Love you guys. Love you too, Poppy. Thank you. We can take all the prayers. It's insane how many lives get taken away with stupid drug wars. I know. That's why we need to just make it like fully legal. So this stuff doesn't happen anymore. It's all it's all above underground now. It's out of the closet. Yeah. Thank you, Poppy. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, it's also human trafficking, exactly. Oh, nice one. Thousand people lost their lives during just a few short years. But what do you do with all the bodies if you're a cartel boss and you don't want the police on your tail? In a really creepy twist, the thousands of victims opened up a job opportunity for Santiago. In the late 1990s, the Ariano Felix brothers Ramon and Benjamin invited Santiago to a secluded spot. They asked him to do a little experiment with them. They handed him a leg of beef and asked him to toss the leg into a container. The vat was filled with caustic soda, also known as lye, mixed with water and some other chemicals. They left ah. Santiago with the container and told him to watch over the beef while they took care of other business. A few hours later, Santiago would confirm their experiment worked out the way they had intended it to. The leg of beef was completely dissolved, only coloring the liquid inside to the container, a crimson red. It was gross, but it was nothing compared to what was about to happen. Six months later, the Ariano Felix brothers revealed to Santiago what the experiment was about. He was going to carry out their dirtiest work, dissolve their enemies into bats of lie. The brothers had asked for advice from foreign cartel members about disposing of corpses. They were in over their heads, quite literally, in war victims, and simply dumping them in shady spots wasn't Oh working. my god. The police were on the lookout for any cartel mistake, so they could arrest the Tijuana cartel bosses at the end of the war. Now, Ramon and Benjamin had Santiago dissolve his first human body. Several henchmen were watching. If this worked, this would be their future method for all their enemies. Santiago undressed the body and stuffed it into a large drum filled with the same mixture as before, except this time there were 200 liters of it. The drum's burner was lit up and the mixture started to froth. Santiago left it overnight to cook. When he returned to the vat in the morning, there was nobody inside. Just a red sludge and some tiny bone fragments. Decker. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. You know, you know how cartels get rid of a lot of bodies. They just disappear. There you go. That's why. They have a method of dissolving bodies. Yeah, right? That's insane. That is insane. Just little bone fra fragments left. Ugh. Man, this world is scary. Yeah, it's like, know. it's like, no wonder I'm agoraphobic. Yeah, I can't handle it. I don't want to be here, dude. I can't handle it. Great bottom of the container. El Pozzolero was born. Before you ask, no, Pozzolero doesn't literally mean soup man. It comes from Pozole, a traditional Mexican soup made with corn and meat. I know, El Pozzolero ruined the dish forever. After El Pozzolero notified the Ariano Felix brothers of their successful experiment, they called in their truck driver. He took the container and drove it to a nearby canyon in the dead of night. He tossed the remains in there and carried the container back to the cartel headquarters. This would be the Tijuana cartel's preferred method of dealing with their bodies. Santiago became their chief cleaner. El Pozzolero was in charge of everything, buying oil containers, caustic soda, latex gloves, and gas masks. Everything about this job was simply horrifying, and El Pozzolero seemed to be completely desensitized to it. Maybe he was even getting a kick out of it. Now he was working directly under drug lord Feodoro Garcia Cimental, a.k.a. El Teo. He would send El Pozzolero. He looks like a, a gem. <laughs> he looks like a nice gem. Of course. What? If Rev died, really? Okay. I don't care. He's fucking crazy. A text message with a location every time he had a new body that he needed to get rid of. El Pozzolero would arrive at the specific location, but it wouldn't be a simple exchange. A cohort of cars would pull up, and he would be called to find out which car the body was in. Then, two henchmen would help Pozzolero carry the body into his vehicle and he would drive off to his lab. There he would take care of the body. Sometimes it would be several bodies. I don't think anyone's going to die. He would take the I think Rev's fine. To huge underground pits. By now, El Pozzolero had his own grip. And business was booming in the worst sense of the word. But as always, nothing lasts forever. El Teo was a ruthless, violent, 
and headstrong man. This caused several hiccups between him and the Ariano Felix brothers. In 2008, it all came to a boiling point. El Theo decided to switch sides and join the biggest rival cartel around, El Chapo and El Mayo's Sinaloa. And since El Pozolero was his man, he took him with him. This is how El Pozolero became the Sinaloa cartel's chief body disposer too. This is creepy on so many levels. He was dissolving the bodies of his former colleagues, but he didn't seem to care. El Pozolero made $600 a week in his time and place. This was excellent money. He could afford almost anything he wanted, and he had achieved a disturbing kind of stardom in the cartel world. But his gruesome work stand. You feel less scared watching these with other people, haha? Huh? That's good though. I'm glad you can watch this with other people and feel good about it.